Glad to see y'all uh, brought in some new faces tonight. It's always good to have new students. So, uh, do y'all remember the last time I was here, we did the Pledge of Allegiance? Do y'all remember that? Have y'all been practicing any of that? Okay, you weren't here this last time? Okay, I, I'll repeat it. So, it, the Pledge of Allegiance is part of what you'll be required to do for your citizenship. And uh, you'll go over it. Uh, Ms. Lori will go over it again, trust me, many times. So what that is is when you, the day you get your citizenship, you pledge an oath to the country. And that oath is, how many of y'all remember it? Any of y'all? So you stand before the flag, hand on your heart, raise your, uh, raise your hand, I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America for which it stands. So that's that's our pledge. Uh, I'll let her go back over that with you, but today we want to focus on the oath of allegiance. So there's two that you'll have to do on the day you gain your citizenship. So just as a brief note, when you take the oath of allegiance at your naturalization ceremony, and that's your citizenship. They call it a naturalization ceremony. You make several important promises of loyalty to the United States. Loyalty means showing consistent support to something or someone. In particular, it will be to the United States and all the, of the laws that it entails. At your naturalization ceremony, you will raise your right hand and say the oath. After the oath, you become a U.S. citizen. As a new citizen, you have new responsibilities and duties that you promise in that oath. Now, I want to read that oath just briefly. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom or which I have herefore been a subject or citizen. So what that basically means is uh, wherever you're from, Colombia, uh, Honduras, Guatemala, if y'all have an allegiance, you kind of, you, it basically means you denounce that and have sworn yourself allegiance to our oath, to our country and our laws. Continuing on, that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Now, a country can have domestic enemies, which are terrorists. Are y'all familiar with that word? What a terrorist is? That's the ones that uh, y'all know about 9-11, the terrorist attack in 9-11. Yeah, that's terrorist. So we're when you pledge this oath, you're not just swearing to fight and defend the country against other countries. You're defending against terrorists. So if you find out about terrorists, you're supposed to report them. <laughs> Continuing on, that I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance to the same. That I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law. Are y'all familiar with a draft? What America calls a draft? The last time it happened was during the war uh, called Vietnam. And what they did is they needed more soldiers. And they did what's called a draft. And in, in this pledge, in swearing this oath of allegiance, that means that they can draft you. If we have a major war or conflict abroad or even within the United States, they can draft you and you will have to join the military and fight for the country, which rarely happens. Like I said, last time it happened, and I think the only time it happened, was during Vietnam. We've had the Korean War. We've had a, we've had a few wars, but not many. Continuing on, that I will perform non-combative services in the armed forces of the United States when required by law. What that means, you can be drafted into the military. And there are many jobs within the military, not just fighting, not just guns. 
you have uh, uh, the supply chain, for instance. So you could be, say, if you're drafted, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have to pick up a gun and go to war. It may just mean that you have to go do a job for our military. Be volunteer to help people Well, there are a lot of agencies that already volunteer for the military as a whole. But as an example, uh, the royal family. In England, are y'all familiar with the royal family? Part of their duty as a royal family member, they have to have a job with the military. Prince Henry, Prince Philip, uh, even Queen Elizabeth, believe it or not, Queen Elizabeth, during, uh, I think it was World War II or World War I, she was a mechanic of all things. She was literally a mechanic. And you wouldn't think that it's kind of kind of odd being that generation of women, but she, she did. And she per performed her duties. And that's what they're talking about. You see that in a lot of different countries is <clears throat> you might.